Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to animate blood spatter in Daz 3D. Now, if all you're looking for is just kind of a quick fix, you're like 90% there, which I, I know a lot of people are, here's all you need to worry about. Where do you want the blood spatter to appear? When do you want it to appear? Where do you want it to go after it has appeared? But for the rest of you, uh, what you're going to need, for starters, before you can do the blood, is, of course, the blood. I recommend this guy right here. It's called the Add-on for Zombie. It's got blood spatter. It's got poses. It's a really good resource. And because it's for a Michael and Victoria, that means it's a G1, which means it's kind of old, which means it's going to be cheap. That's my two cents right there. Yeah, what you get with that six bucks. I think I paid 250 for it because it was on sale. Things like that are on sale a lot. You get all these lovely possibilities right here. So, I'm going to go with this mist because I'm going to try to simulate a gunshot wound. So step one is to get my number eight right here. Now I have used Anablox and I've actually got him fully set up, but I don't think you really care about that. Or if you do, I, I have other t videos for that. What I need to do first is I need to isolate the exact moment the bullet goes through him, because I'm going for a headshot here. So now for the animation, obviously just go to Scene, and also I recommend keep all of your tabs you're going to use in one spot. Don't have them free-floating. You'll just get really confused and frustrated. So click on this guy and I want to isolate exactly what frame it is where the blood spatter needs to appear. Oh, right there. Make a mental note, frame 124. Go back to number zero. Get it approximately where I want it. It's always easier to, to animate video uh, from the beginning whenever you're doing it because you don't want to mess with your timetable that way. At this point it really just needs to be close. Alright. It's over, he looks. That'll work. Now, I need to go to scale 0, scale 0, frame 0. And we get back to 124. Now I need to scale, now I need to push plus, go back one frame, push plus, and that will actually prevent, do it a couple more times, That'll actually prevent the prop from spontaneously appearing. I have no earthly idea why that happens, but it does. Goes up. Now I scale it up. Right, right about here. Now the actual exact location of it does matter. Take a second or a minute or however long you need to get it perfectly in position. There it is. Then he comes back. Bam. Make it bigger. Bring it up. Now, with the, the bullet wound like this, I want the blood to kind of move in sort of an arc, going up, away, and then down to make it look like it's spattering big, and then uh, being affected by gravity. Bigger, away, down. Bigger away, down. And I only repeat myself like this so that it really gets drummed into somebody. 
going forward. Uh, maybe a tiny bit bigger. Away and down. So the end result is it goes up, bam. And if you really want to get detailed with it, go back to number 24. Let's see if I can find me a Actually, splatter number one looks pretty good. So go back to zero, get splash number one, assuming you're using the same templates that I am. Now, I want him to be, where is he going to get hit? 124. Could be right about there. So. Bring it up to head height, bring it forward, and a tiny bit off the side, rotate on the y-axis, rotate on the x-axis. Get my position right. That's good. Now go back to frame zero, scale zero, frame 124, plus, go back one, plus, back one, plus, back one, plus. And I realize I should probably show you what happens when you don't uh, have this redundancy. Go back down one, and then put it on scale zero. Now, logically, because there's no instruction between frame 123 and frame 0, you'd think it would just kind of stay 0, but for some reason it kind of doesn't want to comply with that. So, you have to trick it a bit. So, I'm going to 124, add 1, 123, add 1, and go back just like 5 frames. So now if I have it scaled up to you know however big, it's an instantaneous and now you see it doesn't sort of get bigger until I want it to. But I'm trying to make a bullet hole in his forehead. So I'm gonna go up. And I'm gonna make this smaller forward a bit, scale it way down, get it in position, that looks pretty good, maybe a tiny bit forward, there you go. Then take this, change parent, and I'm just going to parent it to his head. Then when this gets a little bit, I'm going to make it smaller so it seems a little bit less conspicuous. And this is one of those fun little details that people don't necessarily see, but they subconsciously actually do acknowledge it. So, now the effect becomes and that's how this is done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you want to help me out, please subscribe. Thank